Once we discovered social jet lag and it became popular as a concept, people started to correlate health and illness with social jet lag. So now we were into taking the insights of the circadian clock and daylight into real life, into circadian medicine, into medicine, and into prevention, which means that we can say to everyone who is shaping our environment, our human modern environment, you can say, we have to go camping. And when you take these people back camping, meaning you give them daylight and night darkness, the whole thing gets earlier and gets narrower, which means that your social jet lag is going to be reduced, which means that your health is going to be improved. Most of my life, I was interested in entrainment, sort of how my personal individual clock embeds itself into the cyclic environment of a day. And now that we have gathered concepts in many different organisms and eventually ended up where I wanted to end up with humans in form of a questionnaire, probing humans in real life, we found wonderful biological determinants. For example, that um, children are early and get later and later and later until you hit the, the peak of your adolescence, and then you get earlier again for the rest of your life, with such clarity that it was uh, really quite beautiful. So we, we took our knowledge that we gained in experimental settings, in laboratory settings, um, the knowledge we gained from those settings we took into real life and found that if you do it with a lot of people you can actually do almost experiments. Because now you can say, and we've done this, um, you can say what is it with different ages and I've just explained how it is with different ages. You can also say are the people at the eastern border of a time zone, are their clocks earlier compared to those who live on the western sides of the time zone? And yes, it turned out they were earlier. And if you go in rural country, in, in the rural countryside from east to west, they are later by four minutes every longitude. You go to, to the west and that's exactly the time the sun takes. So even modern people who get exposed to daylight are still listening to, to the sun in their biology. And um, the most extremes are, for example, the people in northwestern Spain and Galicia, um, which have to live at the same social time as the people in, in Prague or Berlin. Their sun clock is two and a half hours outside of the social clock, which leads people to say, Spaniards eat late. Now, it's true um, that when I had a conference in Galicia, it was hardly, I was hardly able to get a, a, a table in a restaurant before half past nine, ten o'clock. But if you think about it, that's seven or half past seven our time, some time. So it's not late. It was only true due to the social lie of, of the clock to use all these insight in real day life and work together with a lot of people who have no clue about biology but should have a clue about biology. And that is shift planners, um, people who, who can't sleep well, mainly because their clock is out of whack with their social life. And uh, not, not the least, but most importantly, architects who create those micro climates of light that we have to live in. If we can make our environment so that we can simulate camping as much as possible, meaning that we have to get daylight into buildings, and I always say it must be possible to collect the daylight at the roof and funnel it through pipes. I don't know if this is possible. This is not my problem. But you should get you should get daylight into the ceilings because that's where daylight comes from, not from these holes in the vertical walls, which which are bright when you when you go to the to the window and look out, but the minute you turn around you you, you lose a factor of a thousand in, in your lux 
which is a measurement for, for the intensity of, of light. And if you go into the room, you, you, you're, you're going down um, uh, with, with a cubic root um, uh, down into darkness. So daylight has to come from above. That's where daylight comes from. And then you can even work on your, at, at, at your computer without having glares. So you can shape the modern world. So it is like camping, like being outside. And you can also play around with different, in the artificial light, with different wavelengths. Because during the day, we have a lot of blue light out there. And when we get near to, um, to the end of the day or the beginning of the day, what appears it is a bit redder depends where you look if you look in the sky it's not redder but if you look if if you look horizontally your your light is redder and as it turns out because the biology of the circadian clock has evolved over millions of years and it knew that the most important ingredient of daylight was bluish light and that's why it reacted to bluish light most vigorously and that means if we provide blue light at a factory floor as long as the light the sun is up and reduce the blue contents when the sun is not up uh, at suns after sunset for example making a, a reddish fire environment inside we can boost our camping experience because even though we cannot simulate the extent of intensities that we get if we're outside, we still can boost it because of the change in spectral um, co composition of the light we're using. We're very glad if we can get 400 knocks in a room. If we go outside on a rainy day, we're bound to get 10,000 knocks. And if it's not a rainy day, but a, um, a, a cloudless day, we, we get over 100,000 lux. So there are huge differences which we don't notice because all we think of is our visual system. And we forget this other system which the biological clock um, uses, the non-visual perception of light, which, is only, um, which was only discovered um, at the end of the last uh, century, um, that this system needs real light information. And I think it all comes together now. Um, me working with so many different aspects of uh, light and clock, and me also working with so many different aspects of, bio, uh, of, of biology and sociology or psychology, um, always makes me work in different realms. For example, take daylight saving time or school start times. It doesn't make sense to get a 16 to 19 year old st student into a high school at seven or eight o'clock in the morning because that's the middle of their biological night. Many teachers always say, yes, oh, they don't have to work. Um, they don't have to look at their phone so much. They should not have lights in the evening. They should go to bed earlier and then they can wake up earlier. Typical um, uh, jargon of, of uh, elderly teachers. And I can only respond to that. I work with people who live without electricity in, in Brazil. Uh, because I'm interested in how our life was like when we didn't have lighting. The only people in those villages that had, have to be woken are teenagers. They have no discos, they have no computers, they have no phones. But they are late. It's a biology. And therefore, I am very active um, in making school start more flexible for um, uh, adolescents and, 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 and in puberty and, and, and adolescents. The same thing is humans are so ready to think that they are intelligent enough to improve nature. Nature which has built up its perfect, its almost perfect existence over millions of years. Not because it was brilliant or bright or intelligent, but because so much trial and error led to a product that really works under the circumstances. And now we think we can replace daylight with, uh, with artificial light and we can, we can, we can just be, be disciplined enough to, to get our biology 
into the shape of our social life and not the other way around. So that's why we, for example, say, let's change the clocks twice a year. Let's all go uh, to work an hour earlier in March on the Northern Hemisphere um, or, in, or at, the at the spring, near the spring equinox. Of the, um, we go to work an hour earlier and uh, when it comes to autumn, we go back to what people call winter time, which doesn't exist. It's normal time. Um, and also the word summertime, very often used in Europe, is um, just propaganda because if you ask people, do you want to have winter time or summertime? What, would, what, they, what should they answer? They would answer um, summertime. But you don't inform them what that means because we already have social jet lag due to the fact that we're living not in daylight. If we lived in daylight camping, we would have no social jet lag, practically none. Um, and that's where also the, the, the notions of, of what is healthy and not healthy come from. We consider early birds to be healthy. Why is that? Because under the old, situ why, under the old circumstances where we lived in daylight and, and in, in night darkness, if you couldn't fall asleep before midnight and couldn't get up before, uh, before 8 o'clock in the morning, you had a, a serious health problem. Nowadays, it's normal, but not because we're all sick people due to industrialization, but we, con we, we constructed our environment such that our clocks had to become later in order to survive, because otherwise they would not have been entrainable to the, to the modern um, light-dark situation. And if you're not entrainable, you're worse than a broken clock, because a broken clock is at least right twice every, cycle, every, every um, uh, uh, circle. But a clock that doesn't go right is useless. So it is very, very important that we get people back into being synchronized. Um, and there are two ways to do that. One is to go camping. And the other one is a very important one too, which we have just run an experiment with, and that is be more flexible in your social times. And the big experiment we ran is something that we didn't want to run. It was the pandemic. And in the pandemic, people had to stay home, but uh, work still had to be done. So you worked, you had home office. Those who could work from home were told to work at home. And we've done studies, and most people slept an hour longer, which is extremely important because we always forget that sleep is so important for what? It's important for being awake. We don't have to sleep because of sleep. We sleep in order to be optimally awake. And if we cut down on sleep, we are not optimally awake. And if we can all sleep an hour longer, that means that society starts to understand that they should shift social demands towards the biology instead of the biology towards social demands. And um, this hour is not only because work start times in home office are more flexible, but also because they didn't have to spend an hour in commute, which they could stay in bed. So there are all these huge social experiments which need the expertise, expertise of so many different disciplines that make, even at the end of my career, make my life just so much fun that um, I wouldn't do anything else. <laughs>